I please welcome Taina Asili. We are the fruit of all with standing. We are the fruit of all with standing. I didn't hear my name. My name is Erica Gardner. I'm the oldest daughter of Eric Gardner. I'm 24 years old. And I kind of um, have a message for everyone. First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone for your continued support for our fight for justice for my father, Eric Gardner. And celebrating the life of Martin Luther King Jr. What comes to mind for me is how he never gave up how he never gave up. He was passionate, resilient, and fought for all, fought, fought for all, all the way to his death. What makes someone have the ability to fight so hard and be willing to face death? It's called injustice. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. If there is an injustice on Staten Island, it's a threat to injustice everywhere. If there is injustice in our education system, it's a threat to justice everywhere. If there's an injustice in our employment rate between black and white men, it's a threat to justice everywhere. Voter registration is the reason Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King went to Selma to march. It's ironic that on Staten Island, where they killed my father there, two very political races that involved the man who looked over the grand jury, responsible for not finding the indictment, in the video captured homicide of my father, and now he wants to go and run for con Congress? What happened? No way! No way! And justice? We all need someone to, who gives us the strength to keep going when we think we should quit. We all need the example of a leader who will put themselves out in front, be willing to face death to stand on the principles of what's right. Happy birthday, Dr. Martin Luther King. You inspire me. I am proud to stand in your shadow today fighting against injustice. Thank you. Thank you. And the Gardner family loves you all. Thank you. On December 30th, 2017, at the precious age of 27, Erica Gardner left this earth. From the death of her father, Eric Gardner, in 2014, as he called out, I can't breathe, till the time of her passing just weeks ago, she committed her life to fighting for justice a task which can sometimes be described as believing in a vision, in a world, in a dream that sometimes seems impossible to achieve. But what Erica Gardner could see is how important that commitment for justice is to never give up. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, we must accept finite disappointment but never lose infinite hope. As an artist and educator, I have spent the last year traveling to many colleges and youth programs around the country. And what I often hear from these young people in the midst of these difficult times is that many of them are struggling to believe that we can be free from the suffering that we are currently facing. And I completely understand why they and many of us might feel this kind of despair. Are they alone sometimes? Do y'all feel that sometimes, a sense of overwhelming? I know I do. We talk about the epidemic of mass incarceration, how over two million people are in prisons and jails, and almost five million people on parole and probation. 
Black and Latino people are disproportionately incarcerated by over 400%. We talk about state violence. Almost a thousand people were killed by police in 2016. Almost half of those are people of color, the majority black. We talk about the rising tide of white supremacy, Islamophobia, homophobia, and transphobia in this country. We mourn over Charlottesville and the murder of Heather Hare. The Southern Poverty Law Center is currently tracking 917 hate groups, and there has been a 200% increase in anti-Muslim hate groups. In 2017, more than 100 anti-LGBTQ bills have been introduced in 29 states. 28 transgender people were killed in 2017, the majority of whom were transgender women of color. We talk about immigration. In the last year, the United States has banned nationals of eight countries, most majority Muslim, from entering the U.S. This administration has re reduced refugee admissions to the lowest level since it was created. They have reversed the decline in arrests of undocumented immigrants in the U.S. And just recently, they have canceled DACA and have ended temporary protection status for nationals of Haiti, Nicaragua, and Sudan. We talk about the pervasive culture of sexual violence. Every 98 seconds, another American is sexually assaulted. On a typical day, domestic violence hotlines nationwide receive approximately 20,800 calls. We talk about the threat to our health care. We talk about climate change, about the presidential permit to begin construction of the Keystone XL pipeline, how the EPA under this administration has moved to repeal a plan to curb greenhouse gas emissions from power plants, how they have left the Paris Agreement and denied deny the existence of climate change. And we see or even experience how these man-made changes to our earth have caused devastation to the most vulnerable populations in this country and on our planet. From the fires and mudslides in California and the countless number of Central American immigrant communities who have lost their homes, no, we don't see them on the news to the hurricanes that have devastated Puerto Rico and the Caribbean, and the lack of government response as people continue to suffer. We live in a country currently where fascism is aggressively attempting to take the reins and drive us over the edge. And at the helm, a president who upholds the discrimination and devastation, whose sole god is capitalism, which he will worship at any cost to human life or this planet. And truth be told, in the midst of these conversations, I too struggle to make sense of it all. But as a mother and as an artist, I have to look deeper. I have to look farther back and I have to look further forward. Dr. Cornell West has this to say about hope. Hope and optimism are different. Optimism tends to be based on the notion that there's enough evidence out there to believe things are going to be better, much more rational, deeply secular. Whereas hope looks at the evidence and says, it doesn't look good at all, doesn't look good at all, going to go beyond the evidence to create new possibilities based on visions that become contagious, to allow people to engage in heroic actions, always against the odds, no guarantees whatsoever. That's hope. As an artist, my job is to vision and convey what might be impossible to speak in conversation, what might be impossible to see in our minds, what we don't hear often. My job as an artist is to create, to be the conduit, to invoke the infinite hope and help make it contagious. And this is no small task. So often, what I tell these young people when they speak to me about their despair, really, what I remind myself is that there was a time when our African ancestors who were enslaved could not possibly envision the kind of freedoms we have today. The world I live in today, the life I live, this very moment, was inconceivable even as a notion, and the odds were not in their favor. 
But somehow, they had hope, infinite hope. And with that hope, some worked to live a, to see another day, some tried to run away, and some fought and liberated others. To me, that is the purpose of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, to remind us of our powerful history of struggle, resistance, and resilience. From the first days our ancestors were taken from the motherland to the civil rights movements to today, we walk the path of a powerful legacy of resistance. And with that legacy has always been music and art, lifting us up, telling our stories, envisioning our future, and maintaining infinite hope. I often look for teachings from my own family and ancestors to see evidence of this hope. My grandparents left Puerto Rico, carrying hope for themselves and their children. My parents, thanks to the support of their parents and thanks to affirmative action programs, were able to go to college. There they met and were inspired by the movements around them in New York City. The Young Lords, the Black Panthers, and Malcolm X. They became part of the founders of the Latin American Student Union at Binghamton University a student organization hard won through sit-ins and protests against a university and a culture that wasn't interested in supporting a place for Latinos. And so they fought to create their own powerful community. And with the making of this organization, they formed a cultural component, becoming the keepers of a Puerto Rican folkloric tradition descending from our African and Taino ancestors called Bomba. This folkloric art form, which combines dance, drumming, and song, was formed during the times of African and Taino slavery in Puerto Rico, and was a tradition created to celebrate our humanity in the face of inhumanity, to stay connected with our cultural and spiritual traditions, and as a time to organize slave revolts. And miraculously, this tradition has been passed on for centuries, practiced to this very day. It was in this tradition and in this reclamation and uh, celebration of culture and resistance, it was in this infinite hope that I was born. Just recently, I visited Puerto Rico, my family's homeland, currently devastated. And yet, even in the midst of this devastation, homes destroyed, some, some still without electricity or running water, economy further in collapse, schools unopened, health in danger, people dying. Even in the midst of all this, while I was there, people came from all over the west coast of the island to dance bomba together. This tradition passed on from longer than we may ever know, reminding us that we have been through hard times and we have the strength to survive. Bomba is a dance of infinite hope. hurricanes. It's part of a new documentary and album that I'm currently releasing. One of them was renowned activist Esperanza Martel, who's being honored by the people of Vieques for her powerful activism. In our beautiful long conversation, I asked her about the hurricane, and she said to me, it's like Maria took a scab off of us. She explained that the devastation is not a result of the hurricane, but the result of a history of colonialism dating back over 500 years. Did you all know that Puerto Rico is a colony of the United States? Resulting in today's 
current economic devastation caused by corporate capitalist greed. She says that the Earth Mother's rage is a wake-up call. And she explained how it's also an opportunity to become more self-sustainable. The Earth's Mother's rage as a wake-up call to wake up, to feel. Over the weekend, I called my dear friend Naomi Jaffe, who's also a fellow activist here in the Capital Region, and someone who has a rich history in social justice, from being a member of the Weather Underground, an organization founded in 1969 by white people working for racial justice, to being a uh, local organizer around prisoner justice. Naomi said that she is also asked quite often about this feeling of despair. And she responds with the idea that despair is part of our human emotions. It's a natural and normal response to the times that we are living in. And, and, it can coexist with love and joy. She said that despair and joy are not opposites. She said that the opposite of despair and joy is not being able to feel. And feeling is what keeps us human and alive. Like the wake-up call with the rage of Earth Mother, as Esperanza described, perhaps the despair we feel can also be a wake-up call from the numbness that many of us have been living in for too long. A numbness that for some is the result of privilege, and for others the consequence of survival. Perhaps, Art holds such an important place in our movement for social change because it connects us with our emotions. Like the resounding call of the bomba drums, we are reminded that we are human, that it is our birthright to feel, to feel all the range of human emotion, including the urgency to change our circumstances. James Baldwin says, the hope of the world lies in what one demands not of others, but of ourselves. Our most painful moments in life can often be our greatest teachers and biggest opportunities for growth. These times are a wake-up call to get to work, and many of us have already received or strengthened that call. From the women's marches all over the country the day after the inauguration and many other protests, to the protests at the airports against Trump's Islamophobic travel ban, to the tearing down of racist statues and resistance to continued celebration of Civil War era figures mired in slavery and genocide, to the movements to protect the free and open internet, to the Me Too and Time's Up movement, to adapt and other organizations by and for people with disabilities taking over government buildings to protect healthcare, to the profound organizing of resources for Puerto Rican, for Puerto Rico by Puerto Ricans, to the people who speak out on public transit and in restaurants and in schools and in our homes and on social media to interrupt the attacks on our human rights, to the food justice farmers planting the sustainable seeds for the people, to the radical artists and journalists who continue to speak truth to power, to those who choose to love themselves and love their communities in the face of hate, we rise up. Will you join us? Will you join us? Will you join us? The bottom line for me is that we have no idea what kind of impact this work will have on this planet. We cannot predict it. I can't tell you. But what I hold in my heart is that infinite hope that future generations will feel it. Just like we feel the impact of the work of the infinite hope from generations before today. What is hope? Hope is a manifestation of love. And love is infinite and eternal. If we are ready, I'd like to end my talk with, a, with the words of Ella Baker, speaking at a Puerto Rico Solidarity Rally in 1974. 
friends, brothers, and sisters in the struggle for human dignity and freedom. I am here to represent the struggle that has gone on for 300 or more years, a struggle to be recognized as citizens in a country in which we were born. A nice gathering like today is not enough. You have to go back and reach out to your neighbors who don't speak to you. And you have to reach out to your friends who think they are making it good and get them to understand that they, as well as you and I, cannot be free in America or anywhere else where there is capitalism and imperialism until, until we can get people to recognize that they themselves have to make the struggle and have to make the fight for freedom every day in the year, every year, until they win it. Thank you. We who believe in freedom can not rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. Definitely sing with me, you know this. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Until the killing of black men, black mother's sons, is as important as the killing of white men, white mother's We who 
Yeah.